Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to your weekly messages for October 2nd through the 8th of 2018. I'm going to go ahead and shuffle these. Yes, I am alive and well, just so that we're all clear on that. I'm here. I have not uh, dropped off the face of the planet. I've just been working really hard to get everything ready for you guys before I go on vacation. And so I've kind of been sacrificing the weekly messages temporarily just so I can make sure that everything is set up before I go. Um, hello, hello, hello. Happy Monday, everybody, if you're watching live. And if you're not watching live and you're watching this on Monday. Um, also, I want to let all of you know that if you have been wanting to get a reading, this is your last week to do it um, before I go on vacation, and then you're not going to be able to get a reading until the end of October, basically. So, um, my candle just went out. Um, but if you want, I would recommend doing that by either tomorrow or Wednesday, so Tuesday or Wednesday of this week. That's just my recommendation so that there's enough time for me to get it out to you. So just something to think about if you've been wanting to do that. And hello, if you're just hopping on, hello, hello, hello. Keeping it simple today with a Celtic cross. And then I do have some openings this week for one-on-one -on -one sessions if you if you need to do that uh, before I am gone. So I just want everyone to get a clear understanding of the time frame this week. Okay. Here, let me grab another one. Hold on. I'm feeling like we need a candle today. Okay. So, first thing coming up this week is the King of Pentacles. Okay, so this is um, really about foundation. So, kind of setting yourself up for success, preparation, getting everything in order. And I think part of this has to do with the seasonal change. You know, with the equinox, our energies begin to shift. And so we're settling into the change in seasons. And that's really what it looks like is happening here. It went from kind of that staticky energy right when the equinox happened into being more grounded and secure in this energy. And Debbie, to answer your question, video readings are too large to send to people. I do voice recordings and then you get a big photo of um, all the cards and everything if you want a tarot spread. So no, no videos because it would just be a pain. Like people wouldn't be able to listen to them easily. Okay, and the animal of the week is tarantula. So it's kind of like fit this... Um, really reminds me of like feeling your way around but not really having a clear sight of what's coming up and so you might feel a little bit out of place this week but that is okay it's totally fine to have to be running that energy while you're figuring it out and just just go with the flow this is a good time to sit more in that mutable energy whenever we're not in a mutable cycle right now but um just being able being open-minded to things is going to be really really a nice balance to this king of pentacles energy because this can be extra rigid you kind of want to balance that out with going with the flow not having too many expectations and just being grounded okay and then The word of the week, communicate, clarify others' intentions, demonstrate your values, remember that your words create your reality. 
That one, okay, so so the words create your reality. I want to be clear and make a distinction on this. What you think, okay, if you have a thought, doesn't mean it's going to instantaneously manifest. Okay, so um, it took a lot of work <laughs> for me to personally dig myself out of that hole. So I just want to remind all of you if you also struggle with that feeling like, oh, well, if I have a negative thought, then that's going to happen. And oh, it's oh, no, it's my intuition. There's this big catastrophe that's going to happen. And honestly, if every negative thought that people had manifested, the world would be ablaze. We would all be sick and dying and our species would probably be extinct, right? So we can we can assume that that's not actually how it works. And so what you're telling yourself on the other hand, so your self-talk, what you're expressing is kind of what you're embodying. And that's different. So remember that if you're constantly telling yourself, um, you know, I'm broke, I'm broke, I'm broke, I'm broke, I'm broke, I'm broke. It's like, that's what you're going to embody. Okay, so, um, and Tracy, you're saying if that's not true, it's not. The world is actually improving statistically. It's just if you watch a lot of news, you're not going to think that because it's all fear-based. Okay, so statistically speaking, things are improving. So don't, don't let social media throw you, Okay. They just want clicks. Okay, so yes, speak speak in a way that is going to help you rather than harm you. Now, the central energy for the week, we have the high priestess. So really letting your letting your intuition kind of be a space where you can kind of come from and use it to your advantage. Remember, it's not something that's going to be a detriment to you and this is coming the black um like the black and white pillars are coming from a space of justice and clarity and neutrality. The big thing that I want you guys to remember is that intuition and the high priestess is not emotional. Um, that's the, the big difference between the high priestess and the empress. The high priestess is neutral, neutral, neutral. That's why this is the card that represents intuition, because intuition is neutral. That's the big difference. So remember that neutrality is your best friend, looking at all different sides, kind of feeling things out and being skeptical of things. Skepticism is so, so, so healthy. And by keeping an open mind and kind of questioning things as they come in is going to really open up doors that you didn't realize were possible. So ask more questions, seek clarity, communicate, and be open to your belief systems being challenged. That's also what the high priestess is really gifted at. Now, the crossing energy is the star. So things are really working out in your favor, even if you can't see it quite yet. And it's kind of like this going with the flow. Things are, you know, building behind the scenes. And I, I, I like to joke that the star is kind of frustrating in that way because a lot of people like to see it. They're like, I want to see it now. I want to see the manifestation immediately. I want it to be on my time. And, you know, that's one of the things that you don't get with the star. You have to put your faith first. You have to trust first rather than constantly assume the worst. So that's that's where the star is kind of helping you where things are building, they're growing, they're changing, they're evolving for the better. Everything is working out for you. Doesn't mean bad things don't happen, but things are in the macro sense. Things are coming together and working out for you. You have, but you you kind of have to get your mind there whenever possible. Okay, so yes, you can totally have a bad day. That's fine. You can have a rough patch. That's fine. Um, just think macro. That's what I like to remind people with the star is if you think macro, then it's it's really gonna help in the immediate. And then the the energy that's shifting out is the page of pentacles. So this is kind of, mm, let me clarify this, because there's something about effort that's happening and like responsibility. It could be that 
you know, this kind of looks like um, paying bills. It's the first of the month. It's, you know, getting all that stuff taken care of. It, this looks like logistics to me, but I'm going to clarify the page of pentacles. And we have the five, five of pentacles. So yeah, we have a little Saturn um, symbol right there. And so um, this is responsibility, like tasking, to-do list, all of that stuff. As we transition months, you know, that's a lot of the, the energies that are coming up for that. And then the oncoming energy, we have four of pentacles. So I'm going to clarify this one as well. Um, what's going on here? And then this is two of cups. Okay, so we have some relationship stuff coming up, being a little bit more conservative with your communication, being a little bit more conservative with your energy. Uh, might be coming up in relationships of all varieties, not just romantic. And this, this is also something that can relate to logistics as well. If that's kind of the state that you're in, maybe you're budgeting for something that you have to do. A lot of people are doing that as the holidays approach. Um, and this is kind of the season where people are like focusing on, okay, what, what are we doing? What's happening with the nest egg that we have? And so it can create a little bit of that scarcity mindset a little bit, just if you're trying to restructure things. And so remember that it's both energetic as well as material that you have showing up, um, as far as the oncoming energy. So it's going to relate one of those two ways in, um, the coming week or so. Outward manifestation, we have the fool. So this looks like a nice, a nice adventure, a, a break in the status quo. Things are really progressing and, and feeling like the energies are really picking up for you. So this, this looks good. It's just kind of that clear headed, I'm going to do things differently. I would say that this would also be a good time to kind of focus on what are your intentions, what would you like to see happen in the next few weeks, few months, however you like to think about that. Maybe um, figure out if there's something you want to do differently or maybe a habit you want to change or something you're looking to do moving forward and be open to executing on that. In the subconscious, we have the Six of Swords. So this looks like um, uh, what could I say about this? Recognizing your past without bringing it with you. Okay, that's also kind of where the Four of Pentacles is coming in. It's like that withholding. For the right reasons, there are absolutely appropriate times when it makes sense to go slow, when it makes sense to withhold a little bit more, to not put all your eggs in one basket or trust everyone implicitly and immediately. Um, and so it's kind of like you're, you're building and moving forward with all the good stuff and maybe there's um, things in your past that are finally at the point where they're just stories. They're not things that are quite so emotionally charged. Now, I'm going to clarify this one as well. Like, what is the Six of Swords regarding the Emperor? Okay, we have a lot of this coming up. Um, if you're in the U.S., particularly, um, it's been very, very activating for a lot of people with the, with the, um, I don't, I don't even want to go into it, but all the political stuff that's been going on. Okay. So there's like this transformation in the masculine for a lot of people. Like where, where does it stand? Like what, what's going on with this, um, idea of divine masculine, toxic masculine, okay? So it's like a big transition here. And and this is a collective experience, no matter what side of the aisle you, that you're on, no matter what your traumas are with the masculine for both men and women, um, any anyone in between, it's, it's all about the archetype, if you will. So that's kind of what's happening here 
um, with the Six of Swords, like there's a lot of movement forward into a new direction um, with this. So it's really interesting that the Emperor came up with this because this represents the masculine. And so there's just a lot of... I'm getting like imagery of tectonic plates with that right now. So that's kind of the way that things are looking underneath the surface for, and again, it's collective for, in a lot of ways. Um, the yellow, so I'm, I'm, I've, I'm reading a comment if you're watching the replay of this. Uh, the yellow really stands out. Does that have a meaning? Um, I would say yes, yes it does, but that would be if there's something that's really standing out to you, then I would say use your intuition with that. So what's the yellow saying to you? What is the warmth th saying to you? Um, what word would you attach to the yellow if that's what's coming up? So that's how that's kind of how I like to look at it. The advice for you this week is the Nine of Cups. Again, communicate what you what you're after, what you believe, what you want, make a wish. This is wishes being fulfilled. And so I think this is also reminding you about the stars that things are working out, things are improving, things are getting better, things are um you know, it it really is like the sky is the limit here. So don't sell yourself short. That's the big thing is like, you know, ask for more, you know, just dream bigger. Like sometimes it's not big enough. Sometimes we want to put boundaries or restraints on, on what we can have and what we can receive. And so this is just reminding you, you know, continuously affirm good things as often as you can. It's just about consistency. It's not about having a single bad day. Remember that. And the external influences, we have the Knight of Cups. Okay, so this could be a person showing up. This could be somebody who's here to help. It's ringing very, very, very strongly as a person. And I would love for um, you to just kind of think, who in your space does this look like? It might be someone with a lot of water qualities, but not necessarily. Um, it's just like someone who's here to support, clarify, bring communication, bring whatever it is that's kind of uh, been in the works. So that that looks good, but this is a person for sure. And the hopes and fears position, we have the Seven of Swords. So I think this is uh, looking like the Six of Swords in a lot of ways. Like picking and choosing what's staying, what's going, what... Um, and cut, there's also like a fear that's being activated. Like what if I leave the wrong thing behind? What if I accidentally choose wrong? What if I decide wrong? What if I, um, what if I, you know, accidentally misinterpret something? So it's, that's where the fear gets lit up. Um, and so you really just kind of have to trust yourself. You have to trust like whatever you're putting on the back burner, whatever you're bringing to the forefront is what's working for you and and just trust that whatever feelings are coming up for you have have value okay and then the outcome of the week we have the five of swords man this is like a cleaning house totally cleaning house this week moving everything out this is a great week to take inventory for yourself like what what's working what's not what do you like? What do you don't? Um, just be, be present with yourself this week. And it's not something where you have to know immediately or you have to know right away what's coming and what's going. It's just about kind of being open to letting your body give you the information that you need on um, what's right for you at this point in time. Okay. Now we're going to do a three card pick. You know what? Nope. I lied. I lied. I lied. I'm clarifying the five of swords. I just, I don't know.
father of wands or father of spring in this case. So again, more of more of like you're creating room, you're creating space, you're creating um or you're holding space for more of this father of wands energy either within yourself or manifested in another person, right? So it's kind of like if you need a business partner, a romantic partner, um, kind of like holding, uh, clearing out the clutter so that they can make an appearance or that this is something that you're embodying in terms of like higher energy, motivation, getting things done. I think it's kind of like a purge part of this year. So that looks, that looks good. I think that this is just the time to kind of release, 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 um, especially as we are getting ready for the new moon in Libra. And I also, I will be doing the new moon reading on Thursday because that's the last day that I'm here. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Now we're doing a three card pick. Pick a card, any card, whatever feels good to you. Okay, card number one. The Emperor, again, making an appearance. And this is, this is just pointing to kind of like what, what parts of the archetype are you holding within yourself? And what are you letting go of? Because this is inventory week. Okay, so that's kind of what's what's moving around here. So it's just about reflecting this to yourself and understanding, like, what is it about, um, like, what masculinity am I running? What masculinity am I needing? Because uh, we all have both. So keep uh, keep your eyes peeled for where this makes sense for you. And then card number two, we have the moon. So uncertain, it, it's kind of like everything is up in the air. Nothing is solidified right now. Nothing is certain. This is all the unknown. This is Neptune energy, kind of like floating off into outer space and just kind of not really being fully grounded Um around anything. So it's kind of like the the best way to deal with the moon is just roll with it. Honestly, if you fight the moon, it's like you're just going to find yourself in an echo chamber. So don't let yourself go there. Just kind of be be open to the thoughts that are coming up, be be open to the feelings that are coming up. Don't get too uh rigid or locked into any one way of thinking. Again, like with that healthy skepticism and neutrality, those are your biggest assets this week. And so the moon is kind of showing that nothing is certain and that is working for you. Certainty is actually uh, going to be more damaging. So I, if you got this card... Do not commit to a specific decision. You can take inventory and explore ideas, but you don't necessarily want to commit to like, this is the way that I feel. So I, this is like not a good week to have, to be making ultimatums. It's not a good week to like have these serious conversations or sign 10 year contracts. I would say, you know, sleep on it if you can. Um, you know, just just let yourself kind of fee feel it out first as much as you can this week. This is going to shift over the next week or two, so give yourself some time. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Now, card number three, you have the Ace of Torches, so it kind of looks like you're finding your light again. Um, it may have been kind of like I said, that period of confusion uh, was in the past. So it's like you're probably coming out of a period of the moon. You're probably, because um, the Ace of Torches or the Ace of Rods is when you really find clarity 
Okay, so this is this is more like the aha, I know what I'm doing. And so if this card is resonating more, then I would say it's okay to move forward at a little bit faster pace. It's okay to have those conversations. It's okay to um, really consider those contracts and things like that. This is like, nope, don't, don't move. Like, trust that your energy is going to shift. This is more of the initiation and getting the ball rolling energy. So that's kind of the difference between those two. Okay. And then, yes, I am so glad to hear that you've been trying to um, learn to live in the uncertainty. It's not easy. It is so not easy. So, um, yes, it, it's definitely a practice. And don't forget for those of you, I, again, I'm leaving Friday. So if you're wanting a tarot spread, I would recommend that you either get that to me today or tomorrow. Um, you can email me, sydney at onyxhealing.com or go to onyxhealing.com if you're interested. If you're watching on YouTube, all of the links are in the description box. And I hope you all have a lovely, lovely week. I'm sending you tons of support and, um, Lots and lots of love. So have a good week, everybody, and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.